Hotel. Peace, greetings, it's your brother Beniti. Uh, what we're going to talk about, or what we're going to kind of get in today, alchemy, um, love and relationships, and, and, and kind of how, how spiritual magic and alchemy kind of ties in and connects into that, and, that, and actually how it affects uh, those things. Um, one discussion uh, that I was actually having with somebody yesterday, um, and unfortunately, people that I guess uh, are not clear on what magic is, uh, usually the people that aren't clear on what it is that have uh, that have this indoctrination and negativity on what it is. Excuse me one sec. Um, they usually have a negative outlook on it because they've, they've already been indoctrinated and spooked out on what it is. See, to actually do magic, work spiritual magic, it actually takes talent and work. And this is why most people are, are easily to write it off as being negative. One, because of what they've been indoctrinated with. And two, because the fear that's been instilled in them. Um, the whole purpose and the higher principles of, of what spiritual magic uh, really is, um, you can't really come to the full grasp of its meaning if you don't practice it. And it's just, that's just like anything in life. So s s some of the spookism um, has to be eliminated from it. Um, because, again, because people uh, you know, that may be not familiar with these sciences, you know, uh, again, as I say all the time, they just, they just come up with the explanations that they've either read, um, Googled, or, or some religious fanatic uh, that gave them, gave them indoctrination about it. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is alchemy of love and um, relationships and, and, and kind of how you could put that into practice in your daily life, how you could kind of understand um, your relationship. Um, one to self and one to your partner. Um, and this information um, sh should kind of maybe put into perspective of where you are in, in that scheme of things as far as dealing with relationships. Uh, so what I'm going to use is an excerpt um, out of the Emerald Tablets, Alchemy for Personal Transformation uh, by Dennis William Huck. I'm going to use one section here kind of as a guideline. And, and a roadmap to discuss this topic. Uh, so let me let me read some excerpts, and it goes on to say the same alchemical process that perfect the playwright's work are at work in the maturation of the individual person. They also present in relationships between individuals, and consequently, those inherent alchemical forces can be harnessed to transform failing relationships into living, productive pairings in which both partners can grow into a unified whole that is bigger than the sum of its parts. Okay? The opposing essences in relationships are what drives the alchemy between people. For often the mental or physical conjunction we are seeking with friends and lovers is an unconscious effort to complement our deepest essence to find our soulmate. Loved ones are mirrors of our own souls, reflecting back qualities which are within us that we need to reclaim as our own. Okay? So what this is talking about here, um, when you have a productive pairing with an individual, okay, you can actually take that pairing and 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 really reflect on the effect or as it says here that that person is actually an inner reflection of you now where it sometimes goes wrong you can kind of be misled where when people get completely just captivated by the physical aspect of things as far as lust 
or how a person looks. We we could take that and think that that's the right individual for us. And then when this as this relationship progresses, and then you start to see that the real essence of the individual is actually in adverse to what you really represent. When there's the connection and the alchemical forces and the, and the properties are at work and that, that relationship is being harnessed and flourished into something that's making both grow, you see in that person a reflection of the characteristics that you want. That's what, that's what this is talking about. Unfortunately, um, in this day and time, we don't evaluate things on that level. We tend to just go strictly by by looks, <laughs> strictly by lust and physical desires. Now, by all means, I'm not saying that there does not have to be any type of physical attraction there, because because there does. Um, I'm I'm not saying to get with somebody there is no physical attraction, but what what I am saying is based on these principles, it shouldn't just be based on that. Um, unfortunately in that area or arena so some of your physical relationships with the opposite sex should just be left in the realm of, of just only lust only physical and sometimes when you try to harness that into something spiritual this is where the the negative interaction occurs and this is where you run into some of the problems um, and as I said a, a while back you can't create the illusion that you're going to take an individual and mold them to how you want to mold them. That doesn't work. What that does is create more conflict and failure. Um, that's, that's sometimes the biggest part of a problem of what people do when they come into a union. They tend to think, oh, they're being deceived by just the physical attraction and they will... And they will think that, oh, later on down the road, I'll change this person. That can't be done. Let's continue. It says, unfortunately, maintaining the fires in a relationship is a full-time job. Through intim intimacy, we gradually realize that the other is not the perfect embodiment of our soulmate that we had expected. And what we just talked about, we're going to get into this a little further. Feelings get polluted, thoughts turn poisonous, and the relationship becomes toxic. At this point, there's only one way the relationship can be saved and still be alive. That is through the permanent purification and fundamental transformation that takes place in the Emerald Formula, starting with calcination, the element of ego, from which the poisons are being released must be exposed and burn away in the fires of awareness. These poisons are made up of past judgments, unforgiven mistakes, pointless criticism, and endless complaining. The typical toxic reaction to these poisons is the formation of habits that tend to numb feelings and distance the partners from one another. Preoccupation with outside activities, partying with friends, drinking and drugs, consuming hobbies and television are all possible escapes from facing the toxicity and removing it from the relationship. These poisons build up in any relationship just like they do within one's personality and if they are not burnt away they pollute the entire environment. So now this is talking about when regardless good or bad when you get into a relationship and when it reaches an, an, an X amount of time these are issues that are unavoidable. Um, as it says up here, you you start to see the not so uh, perfect things about that individual. Now, what could tend to formulate from that could be a lot of complaining, a lot a lot of argument, um, a lot of disagreement, um, and then this is what they term can pollute that relationship. And calcination comes in in the form of the ego where the ego decides it's not going to give in and then each individual takes on the persona that they are right and and neither one wants wants to budge and then they even use escapism methods such as partying hanging out with friends tv drinking etc we see this so much on a daily basis and this is why most relationships um 
usually fail. And you also have to factor, factor in economics, which plays a, a, a key role and a key part in that because true people that can truly get along and, 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 and overcome the calcification of of relationships that's being destroyed by ego um, is money. When two individuals, good or bad, in abundance or, or lack of abundance, can can get over those money issues. So everybody faces that point. And the problem is not everybody gets past that point. So what tends to happen is personal feelings get in the way, ego gets in the way, the fighting starts, etc. So the discipline comes in where an individual can suppress the ego and and really address those issues or those concerns in the correct manner. And again, unfortunately, most people can't do that. So this creates uh, an excess of problems. Let's, let's go on. Then it goes on to say dissolution is a way to remove pollutants by assimilation. Tensions, contagious moods, and hurt feelings must be diffused and dissolved before they take hold. And the little dramas and trumped up crises must be drowned in the waters of genuine caring before they take shape. Hardest of all is to dissolve our patterns of emotional, sexual, and physical abuse that arise in many relationships. The effects of passive aggressive tactics such as the infamous silent treatment. How many individuals do that? See, we think these methods are going to solve the problems, but what they do is create more problems. Are just as difficult to remove since these poisons eat deep into a partner's dignity and self-esteem. Sometimes in order to save the relationship at all costs, total dissolution takes place as the partners completely surrender individual identities and take on the traits of the other. In alchemical terms, such a dissolved relationship is stillborn and cannot be transformed. Now, unfortunately, the reality is it does get to a point where it, it can't be salvaged. And the only way to cure the matter is complete dissolution, which is absolving it all together. And people that know that they're at that point and, 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 and don't complete through with that process, these are your people that you're going to run into that are constantly stuck in, in, in terrible relationships. They're, they're gluttons for abuse. Um, they haven't identified with themselves why they can't let it go. And nine out of ten times, it's not the individual that they can't let go. There's, there's an issue within themselves that they're not dealing with. Um, there's some type of trauma that's been impressed there that they can't address. Um, some type of insecurity that they can't connect to that situation. These would be your people or, or people you might know over the years, male or female, um, that constantly stay in terrible relationships and they don't have an explanation for it. And you, you, you might get baffled and say, damn, ever since I've known this individual, they're constantly in these horrible relationships. Well, this is this person here. Um, the, those individuals that are constantly fighting, um, arguing, disagreeing, using tactics, such as I mentioned here, the silent treatment, which just really creates more negative energy and more conflicts and and obstacles that now have to be overcome and and sometimes you you just can't and and this is this is a point that some people get to and they have the most difficult time addressing okay that is why it is so important let's continue on to see the toxins as existing in the relationship and not in individuals the goal is to transform the relationship not not each other for the opposing essences we share with one another is what fuels the entire relationship. So this is important because what this is saying here is when there's problems, and most people do this, they tend to pick and point out things about each other, about each individual. Not rather look at it as a whole and focus on addressing and fixing the relationship, but individuals focus on fixing the individual, that's where the problem comes in. Because when it becomes about I and not we, now we have now we have a problem. 
because it's not about I. And you'll find out that the complainer or the negative person will always start off the sentence with I. You know, this is the, those are all egotistical statements. I feel, I think, I, I, I. That ties into ego. And you'll notice when people talk, or especially when they're complaining, if they're, if they're starting off that sentence with I nine out of ten times, this is a person that's being fueled and controlled, you know, by the ego. So what this is saying here, and, this, and, and it's powerful because it's saying when there's issues or there's problems um, going wrong in a relationship, the individual needs to focus on fixing the relationship, not the specific individual or individuals in a relationship. All right. Because it also says here, the opposing essences we share is what fuels the relationship. Because there were certain things, hopefully outside of the physical aspect, that, you know, made the attraction for the union. Um, so you're not trying to change that. You're, you're, you're trying to change the way maybe things in the relationship are being addressed is what this is trying to say. Okay. All right. Then it goes on to say. Once these purified essences surface and are divided and identified in our chemical separation, they can be brought together in new in a new conjunction. For instance, one partner may have qualities of imagination and inventiveness lacking in the other, while the other may have practical knowledge and a down-to-earth emotional base that grounds them both. The partners realize that by, by validating the other, they support themselves. Then in conjunction, the best of each partner is saved and united into a share Quinta essence that offers new hope and promise for the people. All right, so what this is saying here, okay, is you need to focus each each individual. What this is saying is brings certain aspects and talents into the relationship, okay. And when you use the process of alchemical separation. What you would do is you would look at each partner's strength and see where one is weak. What it's saying is the other partner will have a strength that will combat that weakness and vice versa. So to overcome them problems, you would have to combine the elements of the relationship in order to fix and repair it based on those strengths. Rather than picking apart the faults. Now the other problem that comes in, unfortunately you see this. Are you able to surrender the ego and admit what you might be weak at or wrong in the relationship? So if you can't do that, this process doesn't work. This process works when each individual takes the agreement. And this would be part of the process, as I mentioned earlier, about focusing on fixing the relationship as opposed to just the individual singularly. So you can combine those elements and this is what's going to create your solution. This is what it also explains when it said up in the very beginning of this passage when it talked about um, trying to transform uh, any relationship into this smooth flowing uh, transformative uh, or alchemical relationship that we're talking about here this is one that um, can be saved as opposed to being dissolved right All right. so now let's go on to however no matter how optimistic the conjunction traces of past pain and ego invariably find their way in the newly formed and reorientated relationship now, let me talk about this for a quick minute the worst thing you can do and this is another reason why relationships fail don't bring past shit from past relationships into your new one don't be talking about your your exes and and all the bullshit you used to do before um, Unless you're not having an open discussion that requires it, that's that's what I'm talking about. It don't mean in the in the beginning you can't discuss with each other past histories to an extent, but as the relationship goes on, what this is saying is if you're constantly bringing up past shit, um, this creates problems. It also means don't take your old emotional baggage from previous relationships into new ones. This creates more problems. Okay, now I've seen this personally in my own experience and the experience of others. Um, you'll have the female that doesn't trust a man or vice versa, the male that doesn't trust women, trust issues. Um, and nine out of 10 times, that's because 
they were either um, cheated on um, and they've taken on the approach that they don't trust nobody so moving forward they now judge everybody based on that and one way to overcome that objective is you judge people by their actions because if you if you're a female and you go into a relationship thinking all men are dirt or vice versa male female you've already set yourself up for failure before you even begin and the way to monitor that rather than be judgmental is you just simply judge that person and you make those judgments based on their actions and their actions alone if there's no evidence to support what you fear then it, it is what it is but if you see evidence to support what you fear then you dissolve that's what this is talking about but so many times people bring emotional baggage from previous relationships into new ones and they completely fail so this is what this is talking about leave that shit where, where it belonged it was for then not the now so when you deal with the the proper aspect um, a true occultist deals with the now and if you're dealing with the now, that's all that's important, okay? Uh, then it goes on to say, putrefaction is a natural process that develops in the course of even the best relationships as each partner compromises surrendering aspects of his or own personality for the survival of the couple. The black mood that sometimes results can cause an extinction of all interest in the relationship and the partners must act to keep things alive as this stage or slip back into a toxic relationship. At this point, fermentation is the only way of saving the parent, whether it be the help of friends, a marriage counselor, or a shared meditation sessions. The individual essences in the relationship must be exposed to outside or transcendental forces to introducing something completely new, genuine, or sacred into the relationship. Right, so now what this is talking about is the process of putrefaction. It, it, it is when each individual compromises, as I said earlier, um, surrendering aspects of their own personality. Uh, and this is more talking about aspects that may not be positive um, for the relationship, that might be affecting the relationship. Um, when trying to keep the relationship in balance or harmony, especially when there's problems. And that's why I said earlier, when, when focusing on the strengths and weaknesses in the relationship, are you um, able to surrender your ego and admit what you do that you don't do well? This is what this is talking about. Um, so if you can't do that, then it gets, as it explains, then you might have to go to the point such as counseling or outside help to infuse it with with a new energy that maybe can invigorate and restore it. Now that don't mean going to the outside and spilling all your business and gossiping and bringing people in. This means some, you know sincere counseling or external um, people or or things that can try to infuse or invigorate the relationship. That's that's talking. About. Let's make that clear. All right. Then it goes on to say. Uh, let's skip up here. Uh, let me skip down. All right, let's finish with this last section here. It says, by moving the focal point of the relationship from the mundane concerns of everyday survival to some higher ground, the relationship itself is raised. Sometimes if just one partner holds on to something from the above, he or she can lift both partners out of their toxic relationship. Gradually, our partnership blooms and we learn to trust what we see in the mirror of the relationship and act on it. Thereby we look within ourselves not only to our partners for growth and deep transmutation. Alright? So compromise is what this is talking about. If you learn that aspect, and you hear this all the time, it's cliche. Um, but as simplistic as it sounds and as cliche as it sounds, unfortunately most people don't know what that word really means because what prevents people from fully understanding what that word means is again is called ego okay and as I've mentioned before ego is a good and bad thing ego is what shapes your personality so the energy of it again just when you go back to the hermetic principles the energy of it are at varying degrees of vibration so you can you can uh, portray and and show your ego in a positive aspect um, 
but then you can also make an ass of yourself with your ego or your persona is another term um, that one can use for that so what this is talking about here is, is compromise um, when one is able to compromise especially in situations where you're trying to come up with the alchemical formula through this putrefaction uh, method of, of trying to harness and, and get the relationship back on the right track or not just when things are going um, not so well or good but even when they are going good to keep that balance man is, is called compromise now unfortunately you got some individuals and this this is kind of where uh, the males suffer in the relationship because they got that ego and that male you know chauvinistic attitude that I'm the man I'm in control it's what I say it's what I do um, and that's it and that's what goes this creates problems too so if you if you are a man and you're not secure in your manhood to compromise um, that macho shit's only going to get you so far um, now if that's your thing that's your thing but you're going to find out that's only going to get you so far alright okay and the last section and we'll close we'll finish with this in the ensuring dist distillation phase, both partners learn how to look past their own and the other's personality flaws, which most people can't do, to the beauty and innocence of individual essences. They have finally moved past blame, shame, and games and refined their relationship to the point where they are able to share hurt feelings without anger by reopening their hearts in mutual trust. In marriages, sexuality has reached a higher level in a true mixing of masculine and feminine essences that can lead to tantric enlightenment. In coagulation, the opposing forces in the relationship are balanced and solidified into a living third thing, the shared stone from which each partner takes his due and grows stronger in its reflected energy. Every relationship seeks to build this third presence or stone, which allows each partner to keep his or own essences intact while sharing in the traits and energies of the other. Psychologically, the stone is the solid footing experienced in a successful relationship or marriage resulting in new confidence, creativity, peace of mind for both partners. Creation of the stone in a relationship is the only way the toxins and pollutants of everyday life can be eliminated on an ongoing basis to prevent them from building up, to keep them from stifling and diverting the vital energies to keep any relationship alive. Now, let's talk about this real quick in the last section here. Do you really know the likes and dislikes of your partner? Um, what this is talking about here is getting to know every aspect, every nature, being able to talk and communicate, um, and even talk about things that might be hurting or bother you without personal emotions getting involved and taking full control of the situation. That's what this is talking about here. Um, and this is not just for a relationship, this is for also, you, this can be applied to people dealing with people. Most people can't talk until their personal emotions get involved, then the shit becomes emotional, and then it becomes about I and self and not about the situation. So that applies on both levels. The last thing I want to leave you with, the sex thing, okay? <laughs> this is another reason why uh, most relationships fail, because most people don't really ask their partners what it is they really do like when it comes to the sexual aspect of it. Now, to use the term, if this was done, you can reach high levels of tantric enlightenment. Um, hold on one second. Again, this, this, this can be done by simply, do you know what turns your partner on and what doesn't? Do you know the likes and dislikes? Have you experimented or, or, or tried things? Um, if you don't do any of those things, or even seek or make an effort to find out any of those things, this creates a, a stalemate in the sexuality of the relationship. When it becomes redundant and boring, usually one of the two will go outside of it to seek what they want. And most individuals don't discuss this, okay? Um, this poses huge problems, and you might find out if you might be the freak, okay, in a relationship. You might think you are, but if you never ask, you might find out things or aspects of your partner that you did not know. And most people don't discuss these things because that part of the relationship becomes stale, mundane, and boring, and it's not kept fresh. 
and it's not kept invigorating. So you'll find out whether it's male or female, and usually in the most of the time it's the male, will venture outside because these things aren't being fulfilled. Um, you can't assume, and remember the first three letters in that word assume is ass, or you can't make an ass of yourself, and assume that you think you know if you haven't asked, talked, confirmed, and communicated. So this is another part of most of these relationships that become toxic or filled with toxic, you know, various toxic levels that poison a relationship is because they don't keep the, the, the sexual aspect of it invigorating or as it mentions, um, or raise it to a tantric enlightenment. Um, so this is very important too because that keeps the individuals grounded in a relationship. Um, so that's very important. Um, I think I'm going to stop there. Um, so hopefully, uh, when we're applying alchemy and spiritual magic, it's not, again, and, I, and I, well, this has to be repeated and will continue to be repeated. Alchemy is manipulation, or spiritual alchemy and magic is manipulation of the subconscious mind. Not some hocus pocus voodoo. Um, this, is, this is a pure system and way of life that one can apply. This would be a mental alchemy aspect when dealing with relationships and how to bring that energy into existence and, and get it to work for you and to benefit for you. Now, if you tried all these methods, remember, it does get to the point where sometimes it just has the whole relationship has to be dissolved because the energies aren't correct. And if you tried all these principles and it doesn't work, then it's not for you. So stop staying in, in, in something that's not proper for you or bad and stop thinking you can change the individual and mold them into what you want them to be because the very fact that you're recognizing remember as it said in the beginning your partner is usually an inner reflection of you so the reason why you're you're seeing someone's opposition and negativity and so angry is you're not seeing what you want to see so don't don't try to convince yourself after trying the proper uh, methods that you're going to mold or shape this person how you want that person to be that's a deception um, so anyway we'll leave it there um, again uh, quick two quick announcements um, again to remind people about the two upcoming events if you again are in the South Florida area um, coming up this Saturday December 19th at 7 30 p.m. at Sophia's Garden of my at um, I'll be doing a lecture there um, we're going to be talking about uh, dark alchemy, spiritual magic, uh, Sith metaphysics. We're going to be getting into the dark aspect of things, some things we've talked about here and on um, the radio show Awaken the Universal Minds. Um, so we'll be doing that Saturday, December 19th, 7.30 p.m. at Sophia's Garden of Ma'at. Mission is free. Um, I'll be out there my, uh, with a ton of books on all the information we're talking about. Um, there will also be other vendors there. Um, the sister Sophia that owns the place is a natural vegan cook. Yeah, so there will be a lot of natural, uh, healthy vegan foods out there. Um, other vendors. So we just ask uh, that you come out and support the vendors. Uh, no charge for the event. The following Saturday, um, December 26th from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. at Oak Hammock Park in Sunrise, Florida in Fort Lauderdale. Um, we will be having the drum ceremony for the winter solstice, the dark chaotic drum ceremony for Set. Uh, the winter solstice represents darkness, and out of that supreme chaotic darkness comes light. So the ritual is centered on that. Um, cultural attire must be worn um, for the purpose of the ritual. Um, if you play drums or just want to come out and dance and participate in the ritual, they'll be chanting, drumming. Um, it is a participation ritual. It's not sit there and watch. It's not a show. It's an actual uh, ritual to invoke and raise the spiritual vibration and energy of our ancestors. Um, so that'll take place on Saturday, December 26th at Oak Hammock Park, 1 to 4 p.m. in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So if you're in the area, or if you don't live in the area and you want to come, you're more than welcome. Um, also, any, if you want any information on uh, classes that myself and the brothers that do the radio show do, um, you can contact me if you want information on spiritual consultations, spiritual readings. You can contact us uh, at, at the email khnum19 at gmail.com. Again, khnum19 at gmail.com.
com. Okay. So that's it. That's all we got for you now. And we'll be back next week with whatever topic we decide we want to talk about. So peace. See you on the next one.